Hi, today I want to talk about some other patterns of behavior. And there are two, and I'm going to uh, treat them as if they're on a spectrum at sort of bookends of each other. So the first one is hyper independence, extreme independence, and the other one is codependent. And I'm going to go through sort of a checklist for both of those and pay attention and see if you relate to either of them or maybe you're a combination because for every spectrum there's always the middle bit and perhaps you might be in the middle and also we're not fixed. It's not a fixed behavior. We might be hyper independent in relationships with uh, romantic partners and we might be codependent with business colleagues or vice versa. So what I'd like to do is just do a really quick little checklist of um, some possible signs of being hyper independent. Maybe you're a very private person or you're a workaholic overachiever. You don't delegate tasks. You don't ask for help. You do everything yourself. You make all the decisions yourself and you struggle in long-term relationships. That's, that's a big clue there. Um, and I'll explain why. And you just dislike needy people. They're just not your kind of people. You're really all about doing everything yourself and achieving everything yourself. Now this personality adaptation, this behavior is most likely from childhood and it was um, a response to your circumstances. So the epigenetics of your life, lifestyle, not necessarily genetic, not born with. And it can be modeled, the behavior can be modeled from your caregivers or your parents. And um, we then normalize it, it becomes familiar, and then it becomes a template for how we go forward in the world. And what happens with this type of a personality adaptation pattern is that we get treated as if we can do everything ourselves. Uh, we don't need any help. People frequently will come to us and ask for our help because we're very practical, pragmatic, um, really good in a crisis, things like that. So if you identify any of those things in yourself, you don't have to do anything with it yet. I just want, this is the awareness phase of the four pillars of healing. So it's awareness, acceptance, consciousness and choice. And why is this a problem in a long-term relationship, especially a romantic relationship? Because when we are in a long-term relationship, one of the, the real parts of success of being in a long-term relationship is mutual vulnerability. And this personality type will really struggle with vulnerability because at somewhere, at some point in their life, either within the family or, or school or whatever the situation might have been, we're not here to work that out now, there was a lack of trust that you would be supported, that your needs were met. Because remember, we have three basic needs to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, validated. And if those needs aren't met, we adapt our, our personality to get them met in other ways. So this type of personality adaptation is probably somebody who didn't get a lot of support, didn't get seen, didn't get heard, didn't get validated. So they they went inside and decided to do all of that for themselves. Now the other personality, the other end of the spectrum is codependence. And this is not surprisingly sort of polar opposite. So there's need for approval. Self-worth is up to others. So you get your validation outside of self. Talking to taking, sorry, taking too much on at work. Um, I'll do that, I'll do that. And you know that you're overloaded, but you continue to take on these things at work because this also helps with your validation. Um, it, it raises your self-esteem. You may over-apologize and over-explain things because you don't want to lose people from your life. It's super important for you to hang on to people because they are your validation. You avoid conflict. Uh, you ignore your own needs. You put the needs of others before self. This is a big one. And you can frequently get very exhausted, very burned out. You also absorb others' emotions and um, your own needs are always going to be last. So what do we do? 
how do we deal with this? So the congratulations if you've recognized yourself in either of these, or maybe you're a combina combination of the two, because that's the awareness. And with awareness, we can begin to do things with it. And the first thing I want to say to you is, I love this term, compassionate witness. So imagine there's yourself and another person in a relationship, platonic, romantic, it doesn't matter. And you're, you're beginning to become aware that you're going into a hyper independent phase or stage or personality adaptation with that person. So what I'm talking about with a compassionate witness is when you rise above the relationship and you can look at it with an overview, with radical compassion, you can look at self and other and see them in a, in a dissociated way so that you can get a little bit more clarity and some perspective on it. And the, the second thing to do is go inside as that compassionate witness and go inside and ask yourself, what do I need right now? And I do this. Um, I see myself going into an old pattern of behavior, an old personality adaptation. Maybe I'm pushing the person away and I don't really want to push the person away, but it's just such a default setting for me. So I go inside and what I do is I, I go to safety. I will literally say to that person, you know, if, if it's possible, I will say, actually, I just need a couple of minutes. I'm just, you know, going to go into the other room or I'm going to go for a walk or whatever. And I, or just, you know, it could just be, as I say, walking into another room and just taking some breaths and asking self this most important question, what do I need right now? And listen. Listen, and you know what's probably going to come up because this is what happens for me and lots of people I work with. It's something that you didn't get in those early years between zero and seven. Maybe you didn't get um, considered. Maybe your opinion wasn't valued. Maybe no one listened to you when you had something to say. And what is happening is that old wound has been activated in this current situation. So the, the present has brought back the past, it's brought the past into the present, and there it is, you fired it off again. So it has nothing to do with the person that you're in relationship with or in conversation with, it has everything to do with that smaller person inside of you that got stuck in this personality adaptation. I will go more into this in my course. I hope that's helped, I hope that's clear. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in this feed in this post and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Stay safe.